Hi Hunters! With Sunbreak less than 70 days away now, I just wanted to make a quick video covering a few hunting horns that we should all have ready and fully upgraded in prep for Sunbreak. I'm going to break this down into possible horns for progression, endgame, off meta picks, and elemental hunting horns. So let's jump right into it. The Gale Horn served as a great horn for Ryze's story progression, with early positive affinity and decent sharpness when upgraded. In its final upgrade in Rise, it takes one handicraft to reach white sharpness. If we get an early upgrade in Sunbreak from a low tier monster that has positive affinity and natural white sharpness, then this could again serve as a great story progression horn. Especially while we try to build and craft new armor that probably won't have the best skills and synergy right away. But I'm sure most of us will be trying to make Valstrax armor last as long as possible through Master Egg. Now I do have to put a disclaimer, obviously there will be some concerns for high affinity low raw horns in the endgame of Sunbreak because of how shockwaves work. To review, they scale off of raw and sharpness, they can't crit and they have zero elemental modifiers. And given how all of our options for hunting horns will be gaining natural raw and getting better sharpness, it could mean that our high affinity options won't actually be good choices for us. But this is all talking theoretical hunting horn stats for a game that hasn't released yet, and for now this should be decent enough. The Sinister Strum 1 was a great transitional horn in Ryze's story progression because we were able to access it so early in Village, compared to the Nargakuga horn which we only got in High Rank Hub. In its final upgrade it had decent raw, large amounts of blue sharpness that could be upgraded into white with 2 points of handicraft, and a decent song set with attack up. A Master Rank upgrade should still have decent raw with large blue and or white sharpness, which could still be a great horn depending on what our other options are to us when we reach this upgrade. For example, if we're able to upgrade Nargakuga's Cry in the Night Horn before the Magnamalo Sinister Sage Drum, then the Nargakuga horn might be a better option because of its high affinity and possible access to purple sharpness. Obviously you should have a fully upgraded version of each of the base weapon trees hunting horns. The Kimura Ninja Horn, the Fortissimo, and the Native's Horn. Historically the Ore and Bone trees have been decent horns all around for progression, and with this we can add in the Kimura Horn tree. They each have decent raw sharpness and all come with attack up songs and attack up ramp ups. What's not to like? Oh boy, where to start with the Rampage Agitato? Well, for Hunting Horn users, it was the be-all end-all of endgame weapons in Rise. We were able to manipulate its raw, element, affinity, sharpness, and most importantly, its note set. Now, we all know Rampages are confirmed to return in Sunbreak, so if the Sunbreak Rampage upgrade tree continues to be just as good as it was in Rise, then you'll definitely want a few of these horns in your back pocket. I would recommend crafting four or five of them, so that you only have to prepare different note sets and stats once, rather than having to go to the smithy and change out the ramp-up skills every time you want to try something different. Some useful melodies to consider are the Attack Melody 1, which includes every damage boosting song available to us, which could be great for multiplayer, the Resilient Melody 1, which comes with the Sharpness Reduction song, Attack Melody 2, which comes with Attack and Affinity up on the same note, and the Defensive Melody 2, which has the Attack and Defense up on the same note. Okay, the Tigrex Horn is just good. Attack up on the A note so that we should never be running out of our primary buff, and Sonic Waves on X plus A so we get an additional small damage boost in our main combo if we use Echo Mode. If the Master Ring Tigrex Horns of past games are anything to follow, with GU having 320 raw, full purple sharpness, negative 15% affinity, and Iceborne having 280 raw, natural white, and negative 20% affinity, then the Sunbreak Master Ring version should be somewhere around 300-ish raw with hopefully natural purple sharpness. Overall, it should be a great horn despite any negative affinity it may have. The Basil Reed Rook Slayer is an interesting case. When Basil first dropped in the 2.0 update, it gave us an immediately better blast horn than the Sinister Shade Strum, with its max upgrade offering 220 raw, 18 blast, negative 10% affinity, and blue sharpness but having access to white sharpness with 2 points of handicraft. In 2.0, it was a viable option to use in replacement to the Tigrex and Rampage hunting horns, and while it wasn't immediately better, it had the ability to perform just as well in the right hands. For example, in the Rise 2.0 update, the Apex Mizutsune record was held for some time by a runner using the Rook Slayer, but was eventually beaten by the Tigrex horn, but only beaten by about 12 seconds. Overall, it is still a great horn and one of our best blast options. When upgraded, it could provide natural white sharpness, decent blast, and access to both earplugs and attack up in its note set. 
In Iceborne, the seething basil geese hunting horn had access to natural purple, so that might be something we can look forward to in this final weapon upgrade. Oh, wild grunt, how we miss you. An impressive 230 raw, negative 5% affinity, natural blue with access to a sliver of white sharpness. But because of how shockwaves worked in Rise, this monster of a hunting horn is able to surpass Nergahuga and the Rampage hunting horn in version 1.0 without having any attack up songs. It was incredible, and if we look back to Generations Ultimate again when we last saw this hunting horn, its master rank upgrade, the Barbarian Grunt, should have close to 330 raw in natural white sharpness, meaning it could still be competitive. One thing to note is that the Wild Grunt has no useful ramp up skills, but we can ramp up our Hardened Bone Horn in the Crafting Tree with an Attack 2 ramp up and then upgrade it into the Bullfango Weapon Tree, bringing the Attack Up ramp up with us. Make sure you have the better upgrade version of this horn with the Attack ramp up in your box ready to go. In Rise 1.0, the Hidden Harmonic was a great choice for high rank hub progression and moving into endgame sets. However, it was sadly outclassed by the Wild Grunt and Rampage Horn, and subsequently the other horns showcased in the later 2.0 and 3.0 updates. While at the time it was only 160 raw, it bloated an impressive 40% natural affinity with full white sharpness and attack up and affinity up songs in its note set. If we again look at Generations Ultimate, its master rank upgrade will still be comparatively low raw, but depending on when we get access to it, its natural purple sharpness and 40% affinity would be great for story progression and sets not using the weakness exploit skill. It might still be useful in Sunbreak's endgame if we see monsters that have terrible blunt hit zones. Now I'm doing a lot of comparisons here, but if the Valstrax weapons worked like they did in Generations Ultimate, then the Red Knot Ritmico will be looking at comparatively low raw but an endless amount of white sharpness with decent songs. I'm adding this to the list because we have Master's Touch and Razor Sharp back into the game, additionally as decorations this time. So if the Master Rank meta returns to using Handicraft and Razor Sharp or Master's Touch to hold on to a sliver of white or purple sharpness, then this might be a good off meta pick to build a set with better skills and easier sharpness management than whatever the best of the best might be. The duo Rizaluto is new to us, but it follows the idea of the wild grunt horn, that being a possible endgame non attack up hunting horn relying on only good raw and sharpness. The only other game to have a Diablos hunting horn was the now shut down Monster Hunter Online, but from what I was able to gather, and obviously, none of these game comparisons are guaranteed to be accurate translations to Sunbreak, was that the final upgrade of both the Monster Hunter Online versions, both Diablos and Black Diablos, had around 320 raw, negative 11 affinity, natural white that upgrades into purple, and then 350 raw, negative 20% affinity, and natural purple sharpness. In Monster Hunter Online, both of these horns had attack up songs, which we currently don't have in Rise, but if we can get stats like these in the final upgrades of the Diablos horn, then this could be a great non-attack boost hunting horn. The Amphibia Elegondo Horn fills up a niche role of being able to efficiently use a bludgeoner set in Rise. In its final upgrade it has 210 raw, large amounts of green sharpness, attack up, and a level 2 decoration slot. Overall it makes for a better version of the Native's Horn. Now it can be used in a high crit bludgeoner set or just the meta Dragonheart set, but sadly because of its stats it does fall behind when compared to the Rampage and Tigrex hunting horns. Hunting horn aficionados like Bio have shown that much like the Basil Horn, it can still keep up in the Rampage meta in certain matchups. In this case, a water weak Toby Kodachi. So I included it in this list because its master rank upgrades could still make it a great hunting horn if it gets decent stat upgrades. Ha! <laughs> Got <he! laughs> No, but for real, because of Shockwaves being now a third of our main damage combo having zero elemental modifiers, we won't be using elemental hunting horns in Master Rank in any serious capacity without changes to how the hunting horn works in Sunbreak. Elemental hunting horns are still dead to us. Well, there you go, hunters. That was the list of 13 hunting horns you should have upgraded and prepared for Sunbreak. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing, and as always, thank you for watching.